there was a book written called Toyota Kata by Mike Rother and, uh, out of the University of Michigan. And he, for years and years, studied kind of what is the secret sauce for organizations like Toyota? How do they develop the people on the front lines that can lead improvement efforts in a methodical, scientific manner? And how do they develop coaches that can teach those principles? And what he came up with were some principles and some techniques that are embodied in the book. And just to kind of summarize um, some of those principles in a couple of slides and a couple of bullet points, I'll, I'll touch upon a few here. First one, um, I would summarize kata basically as the scientific method but with some direction added to it. So uh, a kata practitioner is always thinking what is the long-term direction in which we're headed and then working back from that and saying, well, what is that challenge that we're trying to achieve in the next six months to a year or two? And then working back from that and saying, well, what is the target condition that I want to be at in the next couple of weeks or couple of months? And then even further working back from that and saying, what is the next obstacle that I need to tackle? So is PDCA or PDSA with direction applied to it? The second bullet point is it's the scientific method with deliberate practice added to it. There's, there's, a, there's a science and technique to deliberate practice that differs from just practice. And uh, deliberate practice helps us speed up the the, the, the requirement of new mindsets or the, uh, the, the rewiring of your brain, so to speak. And so Kata has a little bit of that infused into it, uh, or a whole lot of that, I should say. And I want to point out that I'm going to go into the next slide and what we call the improvement Kata, and it's a set of routines that we perform to lead improvement, but I want to point out that it's not just another process improvement technique like other methodologies, maybe Demaic. I was trained on doing Demaic as part of Six Sigma, and incredibly effective at leading improvement, but the improvement kata is not designed just to create process improvement. It's designed to uh, create new habits, new ways of thinking, and so it's a little bit different in that regard. It has a kind of a, a different calling, if you will. Here are the four routines of the improvement kata. Nothing fancy here. It's really about the repetition of it uh, more than anything, but I'll go real quick through the four routines. So first, stop to understand the direction or challenge, and there's a skill to that. There's a technique to that that you, you start off, you're not very good at it, um, and your organization may not be very good at potion planning and those sorts of things, but the more you practice this routine, the, the more strategic you start to think. The second routine, grasp the current condition. Nothing new there to anybody that's let improvement work the right way, but there's a little nuance there in that in the kata approach, it's more of an action-oriented uh, approach to grasping the current condition where we'll do rapid cycles of PDCA just to go and see, go to Gimba. We'll treat going to Gimba and observing a process or collecting data or mapping a process as a little experiment in and of itself. So this is more of an empirical approach to grasping the current condition. And then establishing the next target condition is, you can view that as what is the bite of the apple that we want to take? Where do we want to be in the next couple of weeks or a month or two? And there's a technique to that as well, and it involves treating the act of consensus building as experiment and the act of figuring out um, what what performance level you want to achieve in the next target as, as an experiment. And then the fourth routine is iterating toward the target condition. Basically, once we know what our target is, there's a series of obstacles that we're going to have to just navigate through through rapid cycles of PDCA. And the next slide, I think, um, kind of uh, elaborates upon that a little bit. There's this concept of the gray zone within the kata, and it's that basically we're not assuming that we know what the direct path is from current to target, and we don't care. We're, we're, we relish in the gray zone. We enjoy the gray zone because that's the learning zone. And we're going to take side trips. We're going to go off in the wrong direction for a cycle or two, but we're going to ultimately um, iteratively progress toward the target condition. And so you're, when you start to view things this way, it's about how fast can you do that next learning cycle, that next PDCA cycle. And so you go from doing you know, 30, 60, 90 day cycles or pilots of PDCA to 30, 60, 90 minute cycles, uh, more rapid cycle. And that's kind of a fundamental premise of, of Kata. And then on the next slide. Well, and I was just going to um, interject real quickly, Michael. Um, you know, this, this whole idea of the gray zone and that fog or that uncertainty reminds me of uh, an author uh, I've, I've gotten exposed to the last couple of years. He's a, a professor at Harvard, uh, Ronald Heifetz, and he talks about the difference between uh, technical change and adaptive change. And a technical change is something 
relatively simple that has a definitive path and set of steps. You know if you follow these steps, you will accomplish that goal and you know you're done. So let's say if, if I wanted to uh, swap out the hard drive in my computer, that's a technical change. That, that's, it's known how to do that and there are a certain number of steps. In organizations, you know, adaptive changes are more complex. And what Heifetz describes is, is basically this idea of iterating your way through the uh, adoption of, of a change. And, and most, most changes in the workplace, um, I think, are arguably uh, adaptive changes that we, 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 we may have, we have a direction or that what Kata calls the target condition. And we have an idea about how we'll get there, but each step isn't planned out exactly. And, and Heifetz makes the point that organizations err in treating adaptive challenges like technical challenges. I'm curious if you have any reaction or, or comment to that. Uh, I think that's incredibly well said. Um, I think the professor's work is excellent, and your description of it is great. And that definitely captures the the essence of the mindset that we're trying to create through Kata. Because again, Kata is not a process improvement technique. It's not a tool to have in your toolbox. It's something you do, and the purpose of doing is to get repetition to start mm -hmm. to teach organizations how to think in terms of of navigating through the gray zone and this adaptive change mindset. So I think that's very well said, Mark. Okay. So there's also this component of kata, which is the coaching kata. So as the learner is practicing the improvement kata, the coach is practicing the coaching kata. And it consists of planning coaching cycles and executing coaching cycles. And what starts to happen is, that, is the more you do coaching cycles in the role of coach, the more you start to realize that Indeed, every step you take is an experiment, not just as the learner trying to facilitate process improvement, but as the coach trying to hone your coaching craft. And so you start to become a, uh, a better coach faster, and you start to be more scientific in the way you approach your coaching. And so now we're all just practicing the scientific method in one form or another, and that's a pretty powerful cultural shift that you start to see within practice of the kata. Mm -hmm. 